there was a, an, al an analysis uh, or research paper published in March 2009 by uh, Cohen and Steers. That's basically, and that is the graph which I found uh, uh, the most interesting, but basically calculates for a number of markets the correlation between uh, the performance of the listed sector and the performance of the uh, supposedly real underlying valuation that shows that the correlation is the highest uh, if you insert in the series a time lag of six months. So seemingly telling us that the listed sector is predicting the future of the real world uh, with an advance notice of six months. So supposedly telling us that uh, you know, there is a way to make money and you've got a six month period to, uh, you know, to adjust your, your portfolios. It's too many people, I think, believe that valuation is a one figure that, is, that comes out from a sort of black box, supposedly a science. I think valuation is not a science. Valuation is at best an art and very few, there are very few artists. I think there are many valuations methods. Um, there, are, there is a tendency for in a number of countries to try and say that valuations should be done what I call on a marginal basis. So the valuation of companies should all be done at the marginal valuation, uh, at the marginal values at witnessed by a few transactions. I think that also is a mistake. I'm a, strong believer or a strong recommender that valuation should be done, should be based on long-term operational values because at the end of the day, that is what many of the investors uh, in listed securities like about real estate, is that it be a proxy for the underlying and that it be a proxy for an ability of a number of companies to transform uh, revenues to transform rental revenues into dividend. Maybe one of the lessons we should draw from the last two or three years is that people who pretended that their, their ability to grab opportunities to come in, come out, make 25% returns are the one that led us, and many of us, uh, close, to, uh, you know, close, to, close to the bottom and close to, maybe not bankruptcy, but close to, to drama. We should you know, look back at the fundamentals of real estate, or at least real estate investment. Real estate development is obviously maybe a totally different story, but we should be drawn back to, you know, simply, you know, what are the underlying fundamentals? What is the ability of each and of each of the company to transform, in uh, you know, to create a dividend, a stable div stream of dividend? while at the same time at least protecting the capital, hopefully providing capital appreciation. Keiko, um, in, in your country, uh, you were experiencing um, already some problems 10, 15 years ago. Um, uh, what can we learn from, from you, your country, uh, your listed property markets? Education we had is, yes, the um, conservative variations and the conservative companies are only survivor at the moment. What does it mean? Um, the, uh, well, the, uh, in the late 1990s and the early 2000s, well, the, we've got a well, lot of creation and the foundation of new real estate companies or funds. And uh, the, those, well, some of those are the make a listing to the capital public market. But unfortunately, those public, I mean, the listed companies went into well, the bankruptcy in the 2008. So well, the, uh, the only suburbs are the, well, the traditional well, the enterprises who apply that quite a, the, well, a kind of old-fashioned but well, the conservative way for the variation of the property and also well, the uh, conservative way, well, the cautious way to well, the, uh, develop and uh, the, to well, the, uh, acquire well, the properties. Well, well, that is the education we've got. Uh, Charles, what? Yeah, well, um, I'd like to say, you know, reiterating what uh, some of the other panel have said, 
uh, we're going back to basics or back to fundamentals, but I think we're going to see fundamental changes, uh, some of which have already been borne out in deleveraging, others of which are still uh, que large question marks. And if there's anything that's going to characterize this next property cycle, uh, it's going to be uncertainty. Uncertainty finance, uncertainty in uh, economic fundamentals, uh, and obviously in the UK we've got political uncertainty as well. Um, but I, I don't think we're going to see a traditional property cycle, 15 years of solid incremental annual returns. I think we're going to see a lot more volatility and I think uh, it's going to be more difficult for the long-only direct funds. Um, they're going to have to incorporate some other types of real estate into their portfolios or, or, or utilize different trading strategies uh, to navigate these peaks and troughs. You coming from Credit Suisse, um, looking at uh, the last two, three years and what's happening right now again in London, uh, do you think that this industry of listed properties is now getting conservative, learning the lessons from the last two years, only taking 40-50% leverage and being the stable income-producing investment? Well, if I had to summarize it in, in one word, right, I, I would phrase it, it's maturing. Um, look at um, Germany and Austria, you know, two markets you're also familiar with. Um, I don't really think, you know, compared to to the UK or to the Benelux countries, for instance, um, I don't really think, um, you know, we, we can speak about one European listed property segment. Uh, in a country like Germany, um, we have a very low market cap compared to um, the volume of the of the underlying, which means that very limited amount of players, each player basically, you know, having to go through their own story with their own issues and, and legacies. So there's, um, I guess we simply lack of, of statistical evidence in certain listed market segments because it's so, it's so small. Taking it from there, um, yes, deleveraging has been, has been already mentioned here um, by Charles, it's, it's one pattern. Um, everything you know that focuses on, on sustainable cash flow generation that is also going to be distributed to shareholders is probably the second pattern. And um, I guess the, the, the major um, differentiation will be by anything that is going to be defined by quality. You know, quality of the management, um, quality of the, of the property, quality of the business model. Um, that is what, what is what is going to be the difference, you know, compared to the last listed property cycle we've seen.